stipulate, it's not that you get a choice in, in which way you went. You had a choice in stipulating to the allegations that were made against you instead of a trial. If we went to trial and the allegations were proven, then you would have been doing the exact same thing. It, it, this, you have the same results. <laughs> um, and in your case, after reading the allegations, the fact that she was arrested, all of those things, you would have lost on, a, on a, an adjudication trial. That's why you stipulated without admitting any of the allegations. So there was no admissions to go against you. It's just saying that you stipulated that your child was a child in need of care because of that situation. So you would work with the case plan. If we went to trial on those allegations and you lost, which I'm 99.9% .9 you would have lost, then you would still be having to work the same. It's the same outcome. Oh, okay. See, I, I, I wasn't. I didn't yeah. know that at the it time. Didn't matter as to, yeah. I still, thought I would have had her before December. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. You still have the same outcome as far as what you have to do to get her back. Okay. Now that's the I'm only difference is that we didn't put on have told. them put on evidence against you yeah. and have the and have the judge think. You know, reading all of this and, and, and be very fresh in her head and her put more restrictions on you than what was already placed on well, you. I mean, everybody's just reading paper. I've I'm, I'm never been allowed to say anything in court or anything. You know, everybody's just going off this paper. And uh, Miss Lacey on the stand. And I had Miss Kelly tell me that I don't know why Lacey's on the stand. I should have had been up there. She told me that at one time. So, I don't understand. You know, I don't understand a little better today. Okay. And that's, and, and you don't talk because you have, that because of the attorneys do that. We, when you, we put you on the stand, then you're open up for any questions that can go against yeah, you. Yeah, like all these horrible things are said about me. What's, what's been horrible said about you? I mean, I, I, I was going to kill my daughter. That was initially in the initial pleadings. That hasn't been mentioned in court. None of that's been said in court. That's the reason we stipulated it, is so all that wouldn't be said in court. Miss Lacey said something uh, about me. He's still believing there's a meth lab. She said that in court. Okay, but that's not saying you... That was all that that, your daughter. that that was, <laughs> that was if all new things that are being said then you know they have a right to bring that up if things if it's new comments that are being made um but as far as the beginning of the, the reason the case came into the case came forward that's not being rehashed every time we go in court when we go in court it's being rehashed as to because we didn't want them to have to do we wanted to end the case plan where it was at they wanted a psychological evaluation. They gave the reasoning they thought they needed a psychological evaluation, which was they said that you were saying things that, that weren't there, you know, like you was hallucinating. That's how we got them to pay for things. They want it. They have to pay for it. But they have to validate the reason why they need it. They can't just say you need to do X, Y, and Z. They've got to give good reasons, and the court has to agree that there's reasons that you need to do something. So, like, they can't come up and tell you you need to go, I don't know, you need to go get a GED. You know, there's, they have to have validations and reasons behind what they're requesting of you. And so, yes, they can present those reasonings to the court. Now, like the psychiatric evaluation, they're going to say the reasoning we wanted is because the psychological said that he needed to have one done. Okay. When did they give you a copy of the um, psychological evaluation? I had a hard time getting it from that doctor. You got it from the doctor yourself? Yeah, and, and, and it okay. took me three weeks. I didn't know if DCFS had it or not. It took me three weeks. They gave it to you. It took me three weeks, and then the, the little girl said, well, you didn't pay for it. And then I said, well, uh, no, I signed a release for them to have information, but not for them to just take complete control. And um, then I had another lady call me and tell me it was in the mail. Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna let them know that you have a copy, but I need a copy, and see if I can get it so that I can review it. And if there's any other issues that we need to discuss, we're able to do that. Oh yeah, he 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 he. See that copy's gonna I, it's probably gonna be given to the court, correct? It will be, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, he he recommends security personnel for my visits with my daughter. It's a little ridiculous, and he references the media. 
So. What do you mean the media? He just talks about the media in a psychological evaluation. I don't think he should mention the media at all. Was the media mentioned in any of y'all's, in, in your session? No, I didn't mention no media. He mentioned it. He references the media. You would have to read it. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Well, what's the reason that he says that it needs to have security personnel at the visitation? Did he go into any details about that? Uh, there was an incident for my visit with Christmas. And uh, I had said things like, best Christmas ever here at the OCS. And uh, I was upset about not being able to talk to my daughter on the phone for Christmas. And Miss Kelly agreed, you know, that you, you know, you could have talked to her on the phone. And, uh, but th it was then when I said, uh, best Christmas ever at the OCS, Miss Lacey, I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Kelly said, uh, cut it out and then I said well they're allowed to teach her I smoke marijuana and then she said step out I stepped out and she looked like she was gonna walk out with me then she grabbed my daughter and I stepped outside and smoked a cigarette I come back in and then she never come back with my daughter so I then I, I then I did yell and uh, they say I got irate irate but, uh, I mean, I, I yelled a little bit because I was angry and mad and upset and sad. But you can't do that. <laughs> that's part of what they're, that's part of what they're going to use against you is that, that the outburst or not, you know, you've got to learn how to control that anger. Um, because otherwise they're going to keep adding things because they're going to probably use that to say you need further anger management or something of that nature. So okay, so so it, so it, so they, most likely, they, most likely they're going to bring that up in court, correct? And then and they, I, I, then I won't get my daughter back. It'll be prolonged another year for another court date, right? With a new case plan. No, as I've said again, your case plan is reviewed every six okay, months. Okay, no, no, forget about the case plan. Uh, they're going to add this on there. They could. And then I, I, it'll be prolonged seen, I again. I haven't seen any requests for adding it on there or anything of that nature. So, I mean, what if they, okay, that's it. I mean, I don't know. I, I would imagine that they will ask for anger management if, if you're having outbursts at the at DCFS. Um, and now I, I get it. I understand. You're frustrated. You're angry. You're, you know, upset. But what I'm telling you is you you cannot do that there in front of them. If you need to go home and yell and scream and vent, that's the place to do it. Because they should you, treat you, people you, correct. You they should they should treat people like human beings. Correct, but you're being scrutinized. And, and so if you have the outburst like that, even though it may be justified, they're going to use that against you. Especially when the allegations began, stemmed with outbursts and, and anger issues and those type of things. Um, so that's, you know, that's what they're looking for. You know, it, the, the case began with, um, you know, outbursts, being arrested, being combative, all, whatever all that situation was. And then now, you know, a year later, you're still having outbursts whenever the situation doesn't suit you. So what we have to convert that into is you can have your outburst, but you got to have them away from OCS where, where it can't be used against you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then this new case plan, it does say uh, I was denied one visit from the mom. It's been more than one visit, and they should correct that. I've told them more than once. One visit, or not more than one visit from when? Like since she, since custody was returned to her, or when are we talking about? What time period? At the OCS time period, my so one hour a week, my one morning? hour a week time period. And so she, and what, what I'm asking you is, she failed to show up for some of those. Yeah. Okay. More than one, so they need to get that right in their report. All these reports are given to the court. I'm not allowed to say anything, so y'all are obviously just reading reports. That's not true. We question. We use the reports to question. 
Yeah, I have. I've never, yeah. I've never been questioned. I'm sorry. I've never been questioned. Okay, in, in in court. Because if I put you on the stand, they're gonna tear your ass up. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to get on the stand, I'll put you on the stand, and you can testify. But I don't want to hear any smack when they ream your ass out on the stand. When you, when I put you on the stand, that opens you up for any question that they want to do. Okay. Now, do you think you're going to fare well with them? Because I've only been doing this for I don't know how long. I'm telling you what's going to happen when I do it. So I'm going to put you on the I'm well, like my mom, like they, they asked my mom if she wants to say anything. You know, she don't have to get on the stand. She just says what she wants to say. Who? Uh, it was one court date. They asked if she had anything to say. You don't literally get on the stand. In, in OCS court, you don't literally stand on the stand, but you're sworn in. You're sworn in and you can when you speak at the microphone. Um, that's what I mean by on the stand. But yes, your mom was sworn in if they asked her something about it. But your mom has nothing to do with where what your level of completion is with the. She has nothing to do with the case okay. plan. With okay. the case plan, she has nothing to do with what your level of completion is on the case plan. Okay, You're right. So. I mean, your your testimony can be if there's something incorrect. Now you're giving me information that's incorrect that I can question. I can question Kelly D. Don on or any whoever else is, is testifying. Well, I gave you, okay, all right. So we were going to get back together after, and then all every all my concerns and everything, and we'll. I'm sorry. What are you talking about? Well, we was going to get back on the phone after uh, this after you got a copy of the psychological and, evaluation. And have I gotten a copy of the psychological evaluation yet? Um, no. No. I didn't say right. you did. So, so that's the reason why I hadn't got back on the phone with you. I requested it on February 26th. Uh, I have not received it as of yet. The office was closed. We're on the phone Monday, right now. For Mardi Gras. So I am trying to do my best to get you the inf get the information and work with you on there. I know. I, I know I was led to believe this was the fastest route. It is if you complete your case plan. Led to believe it was before December. Have you completed the case plan? Have you completed drug treatment classes? Yes, I'm about to be finished with it. But you're not completed yet. You wasn't completed before December, so they can't give you back your kid if you haven't completed the case plan. Oh, uh, okay. Which, I mean, if you've got the, when, as soon as you complete the case plan, I mean, as soon as you complete drug treatment classes, let me know. But, like I said, they had also asked for the, the psychological evaluation, which they've done, that's now requested additional stuff. So those things get added to it. If you have outbursts, they can ask for anger management classes. A case plan is not a check, it's not a check off. Just do this and you get done. You have to show them that things have changed. For instance, in a case where they're elect, or a case where it started with outbursts and anger and whether it's right or wrong, whatever happened at the house that caused the arrest happened. So they're, they're going from point A to point B. They want to see that you, whatever has started all of this, that those situations have now rectified. And so that there is no fear of any kind of harm. There's no fear of substance abuse being in, the, in question. You've completed your, ta you know, you completed all of that. But if there's something that happens, for instance, if you complete your substance abuse classes, but then you test dirty for, for drugs, then that doesn't mean you successfully completed drug treatment. They're going to ask you to do it again or get back into it. So just because you complete something, if you don't have a change, a behavior change, then that goes against you. So what I'm saying with the outburst is don't, don't give them that satisfaction. If you're mad or you're angry, keep that inside you until you get home or you get in your car where no one else can see you. Because when you do it in front of them, you're not, you're not doing yourself any favors. It's not helping you in any way. It can only hurt you. And so if they ask you to do anger management classes, they're going to come up and say, I want him to do anger management classes because he's yelling, screaming at, at the OCS office. And then, well, I'm going to be able to argue be another it was a six one-time month. situation with Christmas and being denied visitation and those type of things, but they could still make you take anger management or at least an assessment. 
All right. So you got to understand that what you do in front of them is 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 very is very important because if you don't if it doesn't appear to them that you've made changes in 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 your the way I don't you know, they things. they really haven't worked with me at all. And and they're, and they're probably not. I mean, they give services that that's there, but they're not there for you. They're there for allegedly to protect the child. And so they don't, I mean, they're not going to, so every now and then you get a good worker that, that can, that can, um, help you and, and give you a good advice and, and be more of an ear for you and, and lead you in the right direction. But that comes, that's very far and few between because of the number of cases they see. They look at a chart, they look at a chart and a checklist and say, okay, he needs to complete substance abuse. Has he completed substance abuse? Yes, he has. Has he been able to stay clean? Yes, he has. Very good. He's done that. Or he's completed substance abuse, but he hasn't been able to stay clean. So in my book, that's not completed. Anger management. He completed anger management, but he's yelling and screaming, ranting and raving. That's not successful completion. So those are the things that they they have a, a list that they, well, they keep in track of, of everything. Just listening Think to of me. it as, as, as like, you know, like your mom if you was a kid. Parents sometimes forget the kids do good things. They only remember the bad things that the kids do. That's kind of like OCS. Even though you do good things, the, the bad things, they, they tend to out, outshine the good things that you do when they put it in their reports. So we bring up the good things. That's why we question them. We, we question the bad things when there's reason to and sometimes we keep silent about some of the things because if the DA didn't bring it up I certainly don't want to bring it up because the judge doesn't read half these reports because there's thousands of reports that are submitted each week so she usually hears what's said in court sometimes she reads them sometimes she doesn't so if there's something like for instance if the report mentions the outburst she had at Christmas but it's not brought up in court by the DA on their on their direct examination, I'm not going to bring it up on cross examination because there's no reason to bring it to the forefront of the judge's mind. Because why would I want to make sure she she knows that or she read it? Yeah. You understand what I mean by that? Yeah. Well, I'm going to send another letter to Kelly today to get a copy of that psychological um, so that I can see. And I'm ask, also asked for a copy of the case, your current case plan and to know when the next family team conference is so that I can see if they're going to try to make any changes to the case plan. Okay. And I'll let you know what I find out. And if I sign, so I if I sign medical releases, it has a place for a witness. Shouldn't a witness have signed it? for that medical release to be in effect? It depends on if the, if, the, if, if the law does not require a medical release to be witnessed. Now, they may have it on there and whoever was there, was it was, where did you sign the release at? Was it at DCFS office or was it at the doctor's office? I would sign them both. Okay. You know, because if you don't, if you don't sign it, if you don't sign it, they'll just keep your daughter from you. I'm sorry? If they don't sign it, then you're not working with the agency and you don't get your daughter back. Exactly. You got to re release your record. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that ain't right. I would, ima I would imagine that um, whoever gave you the releases was actually, it was the person that was going to sign as a witness, witnessing that they gave them to you and you signed them. But I, I don't know. I haven't seen any of those. All right. If I, I guess if I have any more questions, I'll call you. You'll be calling me, right? As soon as I get the psychological evaluation, the office will call, schedule a phone conference with you so that we can go over them. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I will get a copy out um, out there. And let me, hang on, let me see. I think, have you, did you receive a copy of the letter that we sent, the first letter I sent to Kelly, February 26th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you did. I just wanted to make sure I had your correct address. I'll send you a copy of this letter that goes out today as well. Okay. Thank okay? You. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.